Kalimera Sas and greeting to all of our friends uh, at the uh, Delphi Forum. Uh, my name is Matthew Palmer, Special Representative for the Western Balkans from the U.S. Department of State. It is my honor and my privilege to be here today with EU Special Representative Miroslav Lajcek, uh, a colleague, a partner, and, and a friend. Very much wish that I was able to join all of you in, in person this year in Delphi uh, and, and hope to do so again uh, next year as soon as circumstances allow. In the meantime, thanks to all of you for, for joining us for this conversation about the Belgrade Pristina Dialogue. I'd like to start maybe by just conveying you know, one or two top line messages from the United States and then open up a conversation with uh, Special Representative Lajcek. The United States continues to value the EU leadership of the Belgrade Pristina Dialogue. We strongly support the full normalization of the relationship between Serbia and Kosovo which we see as essential for opening up the European perspective for both Belgrade and Pristina. We've been working this issue for many years. We have a sense of urgency as well as a sense of the importance that's associated with this issue. We would like to see the parties re-engage in this dialogue process uh, together with Special Representative Lajcek and try and move this forward towards resolution on an, on an urgent basis. The United States will be there as a partner for Special Representative Lajcek, as well as for the leadership in both Belgrade and Pristina throughout. Um, and we look very much forward to getting back to the table, to working through these issues, and to helping the parties move forward towards uh, normalization. Now, I know that uh, that both President Vucic and Prime Minister Kurti you know, have been in, in Brussels recently for meetings. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where things stand, what you see as a path forward, and how the United States can best support you and the EU-facilitated dialogue process? Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you for your introduction, and, and I'm very pleased that you could uh, join me, at least uh, virtually, uh, to send this powerful message, uh, because the fact is that uh, uh, 18 years ago in Greece, in Thessaloniki, uh, European Union to the countries of the Western Balkans. But today we can see that only in case of Croatia, this uh, dream or this promise has become reality, while the rest of the region is still in the process, at different stages of the process. It's also true that last year uh, was not a good year for uh, the Western Balkans European uh, process or, or perspective, because none of the six have made any uh, progress. So this needs to change. And that's why it's uh, good that we are discussing uh, the region and the challenges. And clearly, uh, the no normalization of relations between uh, Kosovo and Serbia and the uh, dialogue uh, between Belgrade and Pristina that should lead to it is uh, probably the most uh, important uh, issue uh, when dealing with the, the region, looking at the region. And uh, the dialogue has entered its, its second decade uh, it delivered a lot of uh, concrete results in the first 10 years, but at the same time, we feel that uh, time has come to bring this process uh, to an end. And the end means full normalization of relations between Serbia and Kosovo, uh, proved or confirmed by a legally binding agreement. And uh, uh, Western Balkans are the European Union neighborhood backyard, uh, future members and partners, but at the same time, our experience and my personal experience shows that we have always been uh, uh, successful in the Balkans when the European Union and the United States have worked uh, hand in hand, closely together, sharing the, uh, the visions, the plans and, and our messages. And that's why uh, it's so important that this is exactly the situation we are having right now. And uh, we have learned to complement each, each other. And I really hope that with this renewed uh, uh, commitment with the new leadership of the European Union and with the new uh, president and administration in Washington, D.C., I have high expectations from our work, from our efforts and from the results we can achieve in the uh, weeks and months to come. Thanks very much for that, Miro. I know for my part, I, I very much value the partnership that, that you and I have and the, the work that we've done together, uh, not just in the context of the uh, Serbia-Kosovo dialogue, but also more broadly within the framework of your other Western Balkans issues hat. Uh, this is 
you know, a complex part of the world. We have, as the United States, invested considerable time, effort, energy, political capital in supporting the European integration of the countries of the Western Balkans. This remains at the center of American policy in the Western Balkans. It's our vision for the region, a vision that is stable, peaceful, prosperous, and integrated into European and Euro-Atlantic institutions. I know this is your vision and the vision of uh, EU member states. And most importantly, it's also the vision of the countries of the Western Balkans themselves. That it is striking to me when I sit down and speak with leaders across the region that we're talking with a shared understanding of what the goal is to help these countries advance on the European path. In the case of Serbia and Kosovo, it's going to require some, some hard choices, some difficult compromises uh, to reach an agreement on normalizing their relation and open that path forward to Europe. What do you think that you and I can do? What can the United States and the EEAS do to reach out, not just to leaders, but reach out to the publics, reach out to the Serbian public, reach out to the Kosovar public, engage them in the conversation, underscore and reinforce the importance of resol resolving this issue in order to achieve these European aspirations and bringing them on side in support of the dialogue process. Is there more that we can do to try and get this message across? Well, well uh, the first thing we, uh, of course, uh, uh, want to do is uh, to see the dialogue to continue. And you asked me about the recent visits of President Vucic and Prime Minister Kurti in Brussels, and uh, uh, both visits were very useful uh, for Prime Minister Kurti. It was also very symbolic that uh, he paid his, his very first official visit in his capacity as the Prime Minister of Kosovo to uh, the European Union. And uh, from our perspective, from what we do, of course, it's very important that uh, we have a clear commitment from both leaders that the dialogue will continue and that they are ready to come uh, back to Brussels to meet for their first uh, meeting uh, to, uh, in the day, uh, framework of the dialogue on normalizations before the end of June. So we have a clear timeline uh, to prepare. Uh, but what is also what we can also do is to help uh, uh, the, the political leaders uh, in their communication with the public. Uh, the public, both in Serbia and in Kosovo, needs to see the dialogue is something they need and some, it's something that is useful for them. Dialogue uh, has brought uh, concrete positive results and dialogue is their uh, key that opens the, the door to the European future and also dialogue is very much linked to you know the 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 bringing of the four freedoms of uh, uh, to the region of the of the Balkans and thanks to the dialogue there will be a possibility for young people to travel freely to study to have their diplomas recognized to get jobs uh, elsewhere in the region and uh, uh, we really need to help uh, to reach out to uh, all political parties because the dialogue is not only for for the president, prime minister, for the ruling party. Dialogue is important for every politician, but it's also important to help uh, working with uh, NGOs, with the civil society, with the media, and, and uh, simply to make sure that the dialogue is properly understood in the region. And of course, this is primarily the responsibility of the leaders themselves, but I really believe that the United States and the European Union can also help a lot here. No, I, I think that's true. I know that you and I, Miro, had talked about traveling together in the region, including going to Belgrade and Pristina and COVID didn't allow for that. But I'm, I'm hopeful that that as we we round the corner on the pandemic, uh, it'll open up some new possibilities for travel for for us out of Washington, for you out of Brussels, and, and very much look forward to recreating that plan for for traveling together. I think it's important for folks in the region to see us standing shoulder to shoulder together in pursuit of shared goals and objectives. When the United States and the European Union are united in principle, united in messaging, we can be enormously influential. When there are differences, obvious differences between our positioning and your positioning, it creates opportunities for those in the region who are looking for an excuse not to move forward, uh, to manipulate that space between us and to, to hold things back. So I think it's good that folks understand that that your visions and, and our vision for the region are very closely aligned uh, and that we're working in partnership to secure 
uh, progress in the dialogue and an agreement on the full normalization of the relationship between Serbia and Kosovo. Is there more that we can do on the economic and trade front, do you feel, that might create space for progress on the political front if people feel that, that they have some skin in the game in terms of their own economic fortunes and their own economic futures? Is there more that, that you and I can do together? Is there more the United States and the European Union can do together to make that case? Well, indeed, it's, it is very important that uh, we do our next trip or one of our next trips to the region together. We already tried, but uh, as you said, uh, it was not possible due to COVID. Every time I am in the region, I, I am asked by so many people, uh, to, to where is the United States, what's the U.S. position? So it will be very easy for me to say the U.S. is right here next to me and, and my good friend Matt uh, is here to explain what the U.S. position is and the U.S. position is as we just heard, to support uh, the European Union effort because we share the goal of the of the European uh, uh, Western Balkans. And uh, absolutely, this is not an academic exercise. This is what we are doing is uh, uh, something that is good for people. And uh, and of course, people can uh, appreciate uh, any process when they see the positive impact on their lives. And uh, th that's why the economic dimension of normalization has been very much present in our activities, in your activities. And uh, we are trying to focus on, on issues that can bring the results relatively quickly so that people can see that thanks to the dialogue that their life has uh, become better. Uh, they, uh, they have more options to get a good job. They feel more secure and, and, and better protected. And of course, they, they can feel that they are getting closer to, to Europe and, and closer to, uh, to the world than they, they may fe be feeling right now. And uh, we have, uh, as you know, we've discussed these issues uh, many times in, in the past and uh, we need to have the dialogue up and running so that we can address these issues and we can turn uh, the, our plans on paper into reality for the people on the ground. Thanks very much, Miro. I, I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today and I'd like to thank the organizers from, from Delphi for uh, creating this opportunity for us and look forward to seeing you soon in Brussels and look forward to seeing our friends at Delphi at the next opportunity. Thanks again. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. We will miss you in Delphi, but I'm very much looking forward to our meeting uh, in any of the places you mentioned. All the best to you. Thanks, Mira.